these gamers are overwhelmingly unaware of how fortunate they are. So first I want to draw attention to the early days of coded entertainment. Games in the 80s were far simpler and on average cost more than what we pay for them now. The internet wasn't in your phone and bug fixes didn't exist post-release. Some people bought unplayable or crud games and had to live with that. <coughs> Fast forward 30 years and people feel robbed when a developer pushes out a game that isn't finished. Now, let me make this clear. I'm not saying early purchasers have no reason to be upset. I do think that there's a little understanding in order. Modern games cost a lot more to produce than earlier games did. When Alexei Pajitnov created Tetris in 84, it was mostly for fun, in like his spare time. Go Moscow. Today, the video game industry is a multi-billion dollar play. It takes an army of coders and creatives to plan, execute, and distribute. Think of it like digital manufacturing. The assemblers are trying to get the item put together in time for the planned day of distribution. Human assemblers, I might add, have human flaws. Also, they're overseen by other humans, sometimes even with less technical insight, that also have human flaws. Now, this is a recipe for a zesty meal of stress with a side of high tension. I've worked in manufacturing, all right? I've seen it firsthand. The clashes between floor workers and engineers, management, financial. It's a mess, but by some miracle of human ingenuity, it ends up working out most of the time. Not all the time, but that's life. So that leads me to a question. What do you do when you run out of funding millions of dollars into a project? Well, you have an IPO. You have a public offer. You sell stock and raise some capital. Does it dilute the shareholders? Yes, but the hope is that that move will help lead them toward profitability. I mean, otherwise it would be a bad investment. I mean, investing's a risk, but the world seems to love to live life on the edge. We pay a premium to have people test things on us, practice things on us, pay more for the new and untested, less for the old and well-known. We're pioneers, but not everybody gets that. I'm not crapping on them, I'm just giving a fair warning. We live in an age where a little patience can get you far more than it used to. You can get more for less if you spend your time wisely. I would know, I basically paid to be a tester for a buggy but a balls game. So let's look at Cyberpunk 2077. The game dropped with a plethora of bugs and glitches. Many report being unable to play on current generations or previous generations of consoles. And I'm not surprised, the game is clearly unfinished. Heck, I read an article that compared Cyberpunk to No Man's Sky. The person said they weren't comparable. It's not comparable. Cyberpunk is unplayable. Really? I wasted like 20 hours of my life on game save bugs and glitches on No Man's Sky. These are hours that don't accumulate in my total playtime. Cyberpunk only stole about an hour from me. More if you include those cutscenes you have to interact with frustratingly. I think it'll be like four months before it runs smoothly on all the platforms. Eight to sixteen before we see the game that we wanted to have. The framework was laid well, but many items need to be reskinned. The story's alright, but the gameplay is rusty. Instead of getting mad at the bugs, help track and report them. Be patient. The problem isn't the game, it's communication. Then again, that's a big issue everywhere. And that's all I have to say.